In this video, we're going to look at uh, the rate of decay. So now that we know how atoms, uh, how nuclei can decay, and we know w how to predict whether a nuclei will decay a certain way, we're going to look at how quickly they decay. And what we're going to find is that uh, the decay follows a first order process. So there was a couple of things from, we have to go back to chapter 13 and kind of review. Uh, if we remember in terms of chemical reactions, that a first order process looks like this. We have rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to the first. That's our rate equation. If we integrate that, we get that the ln of the concentration of A at time T divided by the concentration of A at time zero is equal to minus kt. So this was the integrated rate law for first order. So those are the that's the rate equation and the integrated rate law. Then we also had that t1 half, if you calculate that, is equal to ln of 2 over k, or 0 0.693 over k. That's the ln of 2. Um, so that recaps um, from chemical reactions. Now, for nuclear reactions, Um, we have the same exact equations, except we have to understand that there's a slight difference. So the rate is still going to equal K, um, but instead of it being a concentration, it's the number of atoms at a given time. So N over T is the number of radioactive nuclei at a given time. Um, so you can kind of think of that as the concentration, but instead of it being a concentration, it's the number. So then we can basically use the same exact equations. We can say that, well, okay, so if this is the rate law, we can say that then the, the number of uh, radioactive nuclei at a given time divided by the initial number is going to equal the decay constant minus K times T. So instead of calling k the rate constant, we generally call it the decay constant, but it's the same exact thing. It's, in a, it's a constant that allows us to um, relate the number of atoms uh, as a function of time, given this natural log equation. And then also we can say that the half-life, or t1 half, is equal to the ln of 2 over k, or like we had above, 0.693 over k. So what are some of the applications of radioactive decay? Well, in this video, we're going to cover one of the applications, which is carbon dating. And then in the next video, we're going to cover um, a second application, which is um, dating of minerals. So uh, I'm splitting them into two videos just so that uh, they don't get too long. So the first one we're going to look at is carbon dating. So living organisms they have a mixture in them of uh, the normal carbon that we have and uh, other isotopes of carbon. One of those isotopes is uh, carbon-14. And um, as living organisms, we're constantly exchanging um, our carbon level with the atmosphere. So the concentration of these equilibrates with the atmosphere. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Sorry, guys. So the concentration of these two isotopes is, is equilibrated when we're living. So in essence, even though the carbon-14 is decaying, we're constantly replenishing our supply of carbon-14 um, by just exchanging um, food by eating food that comes from the air, well, food that comes from the ground, like we could eat plants or animals, but inevitably all of that comes from um, the air because with photosynthesis, that's converting carbon dioxide into um, glucose and other biomolecules. So we're always exchanging our carbon with the atmosphere through our through respiration. Uh, and things like that. So uh, when we live, our carbon-14, carbon-12 ratio is going to remain the, sa remain the same. When uh, an organism dies, we stop respiring and we stop equilibrating with the, um, with the atmosphere. So what winds up happening is, is 
um, when an organism dies, the uh, 14 carbon begins to decay. And from that decay, we can then determine um, things about when that we, we can determine uh, when that organism died, because relatively speaking, we can say that, well, as, when this organism died, the carbon-14 started to break down, the concentration of carbon-14 is going to decrease and approach that of 100% carbon-12. So using that decay uh, mode, we can then say, well, let's track back and figure out how long that organism lived for. So let's take a look at a practice problem that uses this. Um, it says that human remains from an ancient civilization are located in a cave. The rate of C14 uh, disintegrations from the main remains was determined to be 6.5 per minute. So this is a really interesting um, thing that we have to talk about in terms of understanding how this is done. So we can't actually measure the C14 concentration. What we can measure though is the emission of particles from this C14. So C14 is going to decay by beta. So this thing is gonna be spitting out uh, beta particles as it decays. And we can measure the rate of decay of those beta particles. We can measure the emission of those beta particles and the rate is gonna be proportional to the number of atoms, right? So the rate of decay is equal to K times the number of those atoms. So there's a proportionality there. If we know the rate of decay, we have a proportionality. We don't know exactly what the number of atoms are, but we know, pr pr relatively speaking, what the, um, the number of atoms there is. So we can actually use this rate of disintegrations of 6.5 per minute and say that this is proportional to the number of atoms that are present. So we're gonna look and see how that's important in just a second. So first thing it says, calculate the decay constant K if the half-life of 14C is 5,730 years. Now, when it comes to um, doing first order kinetics with concentration, the standard units are seconds. However, because seconds would be, because these decays tend to happen over many years or thousands of years or millions of years or even billions of years when it comes to things like uranium, um, it's not convenient to use seconds because we would get such large numbers that it would be impractical to work with. So oftentimes these uh, decay rate constants and decay times are indicated in convenient units. So you can, if, if something decays in minutes, we would use minutes. If something decays in years, we would use years. If something decays in you know millions of years, you could use a unit where you have millions of years. So it's it's about being convenient in, in the case of um, radioactive decay. So we're going to stick to this problem for years because um, the age of the remains is probably going to be in the thousands of years um, or the tens of thousands of years, depending on how old the site was. So let's look at the calculating the decay constant. So remember that T1 half is equal to the ln of 2 over K. So if we reorganize this a little bit, we could say, well, okay, K is going to equal the ln of 2 over T1 half. So if we just move that T1 half down, so if we want to calculate K, we get uh, ln of 2 divided by 5,730 years is going to equal 1.2 times 10 to the fourth, I'm sorry, times 10 to the minus fourth years. And remember, the units of K for this one are going to be years to the minus one. That's important. So we use the half-life equation here to get the uh, rate constant for this process. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because in the second part of the problem, we have to calculate um, a we have to calculate using the first order integrated rate equation, which requires us to have k. So then it says calculate the age of the remains if the living tissue has a disintegration rate of fifteen point three per minute. So what you see is living tissue right now. If you were to measure that, has fifteen disintegrations per minute. So this is proportional to the number of carbon-14 atoms in living tissue. Now, in the remains that were found, they only have 6.5 disintegrations per minute. So this is also proportional to the number of atoms, and this is so this is living, and this is in the remains. 
So this makes sense because as time has gone on, the number of carbon-14 atoms has gone down. So the, uh, the, the number of carbon-14 atoms has gone down, and therefore the, the disintegrations per minute has also gone down. And that's proportional given the rate of decay equation. So we can just plug these right into our equation where we have ln of the number at time t over the number at time zero is equal to minus kt. We can plug those in and calculate for t. So if we do that, if we say, well, okay, ln of 6.5, which is the number of disintegrations per minute we have now, divided by the number of disintegrations per minute for living tissue, which is 15.3, is equal to minus 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 years to the minus 1 times t. If we solve this equation, we get a t equal to 7,133 years. So, so you can see that this carbon dating process is very useful because by looking at the number of disintegrations per minute, um, which is proportional to the number of atoms of carbon-14 that are there, we can actually go back and date um, with a, a very high degree of accuracy how old that sample was. So in the next video, we're going to do very similar things, but we're going to take a look at um, dating um, minerals.